Chapter 1. Psychology. Psychology is a theoretical and applied discipline that emerged in the 19th century in Europe and North America from the established disciplines of physiology and philosophy. Its principal focus is the scientific study of behavior. To achieve this, psychologists study how organisms, primarily humans but not exclusively, act, think, learn, perceive, feel, interact with others and understand themselves. Nevertheless, given that psychological theory originated in a Western context, caution is recommended when applying psychological theory to people from other cultures such as New Zealand, Maori or Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. The discipline of psychology focuses on behavioral responses, including affective and cognitive, to certain sets of conditions. Psychology is both a natural and a social science that attempts to determine the laws of nature at the cellular level, as in bioscientific inquiry, and also to explain human behavior in individuals and groups. Within the discipline, professional psychologists practice in two broad areas, theoretical, research or academic, and applied, clinical practice or organizational psychology. The major theoretical perspectives, also called paradigms, that attempt to explain and predict specific behaviors include psychoanalytic, behavioral, cognitive, and humanistic. At times, these theories can be complementary, but at other times, they can be contradictory. Finally, other theoretical perspectives that are outside the field of psychology are recognized for the role they play in influencing behavior. These paradigms include the biomedical model and sociological theories. Theories of personality and human behavior. Personality theories propose psychological models to explain human behaviors. They emerge from the curiosity about and philosophical inquiry into the human condition. The theories also place particular emphasis on identifying the causes of abnormal behavior so as to develop models for understanding, prevention, or treatment of health problems with behavioral or lifestyle component such as physical activity or tobacco smoking. Explanations of human behavior can be broadly divided into three paradigms, biomedical or biological, physical models. Psychological models, including psychoanalytic, behavioral, cognitive, and humanistic approaches. Sociological models. Within these paradigms are a number of major viewpoints that offer a theory of personality development or on an explanation of human behavior. They are listed below. Biomedical model proposes that behavior is influenced by physiology, with normal behavior occurring when the body is in a state of equilibrium and abnormal behavior being a consequence of physical pathology. Psychoanalytic theory asserts that behavior is driven by unconscious processes and influenced by childhood developmental conflicts that have either been resolved or remain unresolved. Behavioral psychology presents the view that behavior is influenced by factors external to the individual. Behaviors are learned depending on whether they are rewarded or not by association with another event or by imitation. Cognitive psychology acknowledges the role of perception and thoughts about oneself, one's individual experience and the environment in influencing behavior. Humanistic psychology focuses on the development of a concept of self and the striving of individual to achieve personal goals. Eclectic approach, also called holistic, draws on the theory and research of several paradigms to obtain an overall understanding or provide a more comprehensive explanation that would be achieved by using one theoretical model alone. For example, in clinical practice, 
Cognitive behavior, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is a frequently used counseling approach. In research, a mixed method approach may be utilized. Sociological theories shifts the emphasis from the individual to the broader social forces that influence people. This model challenges the notion of individual pathology and acknowledges the responsibility of society for the health of its citizens. Each of these seemingly disparate perspectives makes a substantial contribution to the understanding of how and why humans think, feel, and behave as they do, and thereby identifies opportunities for prevention and treatment of health problems with the behavioral component. Nevertheless, as a comprehensive theory of human behavior, it also has major shortcomings, hence the practice of using an eclectic approach that utilizes more than one theory. Biomedical model, also known as psychobiology or the neuroscience perspective, the biomedical model asserts that normal behavior is a consequence of equilibrium within the body and that abnormal behavior results from pathological bodily or brain function. This is not a new notion. In the 4th century BC, the Greek physician Hippocrates attributed mental disorder to brain pathology. His ideas were overshadowed, however, when throughout the Dark Ages and later during the Renaissance, thinking and explanations shifted to witchcraft or demonic possession. In the 19th century, a return to biophysical explanations accompanied the emergence of the public health movement. In recent times, advances in technology have led to increased understanding of organic determinants of behavior. Research and treatment have focused on four main areas. Nervous system disorders, in particular neurotransmitter disturbance at the synaptic gap between neurons. More than 15 neurotransmitters have been identified, four of which are implicated in mental illness. These are acetylcholine, Alzheimer's disease, dopamine, schizophrenia, noradrenaline, mood disorder, and neurotonin, mood disorder. Structural changes to the brain, perhaps following a trauma or in degenerative disorders such as Huntington disease, endocrine or gland dysfunction, as in hypothyroidism. This has a similar presentation to clinical depression and hormonal changes are considered to be a contributing factor in postnatal depression. Familial, genetic transmission of mental illness. Twin studies reviewed by Irving Gottesman found the following lifetime risks of developing schizophrenia. General population, 1%. One parent, 13%. Sibling, 9%. Dizygotic, non-identical twin, 17%. Two parents, 46%. And monozygotic, identical twin, 48%. Although genetic studies demonstrate a correlation between having a close relative with schizophrenia and the likelihood of developing the disorder, a shared genetic history alone is not sufficient. If genetics were the only etiological factor, the concordance rate for monozygotic twins could be expected to be 100%. Gottesman's research is important because it supports the diathesis stress hypothesis, a widely held explanation for the development of mental disorder that proposes that constitutional predisposition combined with the environmental stress will lead to mental illness. Critic of the Biomedical Model Among treatments that emerge from the biomedical model are medications that alter the function, production, and reabsorption of neurotransmitters in the synaptic gap. However, evidence that a particular intervention is an effective treatment is not proof of a causal link with the illness. For example, consider a person with type 1 insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. Because this person lacks insulin to metabolize glucose, 
The condition is managed with regular insulin injections. However, the lack of insulin is a symptom of the disease, not the cause. Whatever caused the pancreas to cease producing insulin is not known, despite the treatment being effective. Similarly, with schizophrenia, the relationship between taking antipsychotic medications, which are dopamine antagonists, dopamine levels and symptom management is correlational, not causal. Therefore, although antipsychotic medication affects dopamine receptors, enhance dopamine levels, and can be an effective treatment to manage the symptoms of schizophrenia. This does not provide evidence that elevated dopamine levels cause the disorder. Psychoanalytic theory. Sigmund Freud developed the first psychological explanation of human behavior, psychoanalytic theory, in the late 19th century. He placed strong emphasis on the role of unconscious processes, not in the conscious mind of the individual, in the domain in human behavior. Central tenets of the theory are that intrapsychic, generally unconscious forces, developmental factors and family relationships determine human behavior. According to psychoanalytic theory, normal development results when the individual satisfactorily traverses each developmental stage and mental illness is seen as a consequence of fixation at a particular developmental stage or conflict that has not been resolved. Sigmund Freud Freud, 1856-1939, was an Austrian neurologist who, in his clinical practice, saw a number of patients with sensory or neurological problems for which he was unable to identify psychological cause. These patients were mainly middle-class Viennese women. It was from his work with these patients that Freud hypothesized that the cause of their illness was psychological. From this assumption, he developed an explanation of personality development, which he called psychoanalytic theory. According to Freud, the mind is composed of three forces. They add the primitive biological force comprising two basic tribes, sexual and aggressive. The aid operates on the pleasure principle and seeks to satisfy life-sustaining needs such as food, love, and creativity, in addition to sexual gratification. The ego, the cognitive component of personality that attempts to use realistic means, the reality principle, to achieve the desire of the head. The superego, the internalized moral standards of society in which one lives. It represents the person's ideal self and can be equated to a conscience. Freud's theory proposes that personality development progresses through five stages throughout childhood. At each stage, the child's behavior is driven by need to satisfy sexual and aggressive drives via the mouth, anus, or genitals. Failure of the child to satisfy these needs at any one of the stages will result in psychological difficulties that are carried into adulthood. For example, unresolved issues at the oral stage can lead to a dependency issues at in adulthood. Problems in the anal stage may lead to the child later developing obsessive compulsive traits. Freud's stages of psychosexual development are oral from birth to about 18 months. Oral from birth to about 18 months, where the primary focus of the aid is the mouth. Anal, from approximately 18 months to 3 years, where libido shifts from the mouth to the anus, and primary gratification is derived from expelling or retaining feces. Phallic, from approximately 3 to 6 years, where gratification of the aid occurs through the genitals. Latent, Freud proposed that from approximately 6 to 12 years, the child goes through a latency phase in which sexual urges are dormant. Genital. Once the child passes through puberty, sexual urges re-emerge, but now they are directed towards another person, not the self 
as they were in an earlier stage of development. As they were at earlier stage of development. Defense mechanisms, an important contribution of psychoanalytic theory to the understanding of behavior, has been the identification of defense mechanisms and the role they play in mediating anxiety. Defense mechanisms were first described by Freud and later elaborated by his daughter Anna Freud 1966. They are unconscious protective processes whereby anxiety experienced by the ego is reduced. Commonly used defense mechanisms include repression, the primary defense mechanism and an unconscious process whereby unacceptable impulses, feelings, thoughts are barred from consciousness. For example, memories of sexual abuse in childhood, regression, the avoidance of present difficulties by a reversion to an earlier, less mature way of dealing with the situation. For example, a toilet trained child who become incontinent following the birth of a sibling. Denial, the blocking of painful information from consciousness. For example, not accepting that a loss has occurred. Projection, the denial of one's own unconscious impulses by attributing them to another person. For example, when you dislike someone, but believe it is the other person who does not like you. Sublimation, an unconscious process whereby libido is tra transformed into a more socially acceptable outlet. Example, creativity, art, or sport. Displacement, the transferring of emotion from the source to a substitute. For example, a person who is an assertive in an interaction with a supervisor at work and kicks the cat on arriving home. Rationalization. A rational excuse is used to explain behavior that may be motivated by an irrational force. For example, cheating when completing a tax return with the excuse that everyone does it. Intellectualization. Isolation. Feelings are cut off from the events in which they occur. After an unsuccessful, for example, after an unsuccessful job interview, the person says, I didn't really want the job anyway. Reaction formation, developing a personality trait that is the opposite of the original unconscious or repressed trait. For example, avoiding a friend's partner because you're attracted to that person. Being aware of defense mechanisms and the role they play in managing anxiety can assist health professionals to understand that a person's seemingly irrational behavior may have an unconscious cause. For example, the child who regresses following a serious illness is not attention-seeking, but reverts into behaviors from a time where they felt safe. Critic of Psychoanalytic Theory Although the notion of unconscious motivations and defense mechanisms are helpful in interpreting behaviors, Freud's version of psychoanalytic theory has not been without its critics. Fellow psychoanalyst Eric Erikson disagreed with Freud's theory of psychosexual stages of development and proposed instead a psychosocial theory in which development occurred throughout the lifespan not just through childhood as in Freud's model. The unconscious nature of Freud's concepts and stages renders them difficult to test, and therefore, there is little evidence to support Freudian theory. Feminists also object to Freud's interpretation of the psychological development of women, arguing that there is a scant evidence to support the hypothesis that women view their bodies as inferior to months because they do not have a penis. Nevertheless, despite these criticisms, psychoanalytic theory does provide plausible explanation for seemingly irrational behavior. Case study, Haley. Haley is a 15 year old high school student who is a member of the National Olympic Swimming Team. She currently holds the national title for the 100 and 200 meters breakthrough event. She's an only child and her mother 
was recently reassigned from work to support Haley's strenuous training regimen. Two weeks ago, Haley suffered a seizure and collapsed at training. When she woke up in the hospital, she was paralyzed on her left side. Subsequent investigation identified an inoperable brain tumor. Haley and her parents were told that the life expectancy for this particular type of tumor is three to six months. Jake is a physiotherapist who has been assigned Haley in his caseload. The referral from the neurosurgeon requests that Haley be assisted to mobilize and taught how to use a walking stick prior her discharge home. She will attend the hospital daily for radiotherapy, but this treatment is considered to be palliative, not curative. Haley welcomed Jake warmly when she met him and said, Am I pleased to see you? I want to get moving again, so that I can return to my swimming training. The Olympic selections are only three months away. Jake was puzzled by Haley's statement because he read in the notes that Haley had been informed of her diagnosis and her prognosis. Critical thinking. Which defense mechanism is Haley using? What purpose might this defense mechanism serve Haley at the moment? How useful is Coppin's strategy in the longer term? How might Jake respond to Haley when she talks about returning to training to the Olympics? How might Jake respond to Haley when she talks about returning to training for the Olympics? Behavioral psychology. Behavioral psychology, also called behaviorism, is a school of psychological thought founded in the United States by John B. Watson in the early 20th century with purpose of objectively studying observable human behavior as opposed to examining the mind, which was the prevalent psychological method at the time in Europe. The model proposes a scientific a scientific approach to the study of behavior. The feature that behaviorists argue is lacking in psychoanalytic theory and in humanistic psychology, which developed later. Behaviorism opposes the introspective structuralist approach of psychoanalysis and emphasizes the importance of the environment in shaping behavior. The focus is only observable behavior and conditions that elicit and maintain the behavior, classical conditioning, or factors that reinforce behavior, operant conditioning, or vicarious, lear or vicarious learning through watching and imitating the behavior of others, modeling. Three basic assumptions underpin behavioral theory. These are that personality is determined by prior learning, that human behavior is changeable throughout the lifespan and that changes in behavior are generally caused by changes in environment. The following people were prominent figures in the development of behavioral psychology. Ivan Pavlov, Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov, 1849-1936, was the first to describe the relationship between stimulus and response. Pavlov demonstrated that the dog could learn to salivate, respond, to a non-food stimulus, a bell, if the stimulus was simultaneously presented with the food. His discovery became known as learning by association or classical conditioning. Phobias and fear, for example, can be explained by classical conditioning. John B. Watson. Watson, 1878-1958, who is attributed as being the founder of behaviorism changed the focus of psychology from the study of inner sensations to the study of observable behavior. In his quest to make psychology a true science, Watson further developed Pavlov's work on stimulus response learning and experimented by manipulating stimulus conditions. In the classic Little Albert experiment, Watson and his colleague Rainer, 1920, conditioned a young child to fear a white rat by producing a loud noise at the same time that Albert touched the rat, which he initially did not fear. Albert's fear reaction also generalized on other fury objects, such as fur coat and a white rabbit. Furthermore, Watson believed that an abnormal behaviors were the results of earlier faulty conditioning and that reconditioning could modify these behaviors. His work heralded 
the introduction of psychological approaches to treat problem behaviors. B. F. Skinner Skinner, 1904-1919, formulated the notion of instrumental or operant conditioning in which reinforcers, rewards, contribute to the probability of a response being either repeated or extinguished. Skinner believed that behavior was the result of an interaction between the individual and the environment, and because the environment was more readily amenable to change, this was the most appropriate place to intervene to bring about change. His research demonstrated that by changing contingencies that were external to the person, behavior could be altered. This is an underlying principle in interventions using an operant conditioning or learning by consequence approach. Skinner, 1953. Critic of behavioral psychology. Behaviorism provided the first scientifically testable theories of human development, as well as plausible explanations of how behaviors are learned and, in the clinical arena, how conditions such as addictions, depression, phobias, and anxiety develop. Behavioral principles underpin many approaches to behavior change. Behavioral explanations are less convincing, however, when applied to complex human emotions, for example, compassion, or behaviors, for example, altruism, or the behaviors of a person with a medical condition like dementia. Furthermore, most behavioral research has been conducted on animals under laboratory conditions, so to extrapolate findings from this research to humans, is mechanistic and does not allow for interesting human qualities like creativity or altruism. Finally, behavioral theory falls short in explaining the success of an individual brought up in an adverse environment or why a person whose environment is apparently healthy and advantaged engages in deviant or antisocial behavior. Cognitive Psychology Since the 1950s, Interest in the cognitive or thinking processes involved in behavioral responses has expanded. Cognitive psychological theory proposes that people actively interpret the environment and cognitively construct their work. Therefore, behavior is a result of the interplay of external and internal events. External events are the stimuli and reinforcements that regulate behavior and internal events are one's perceptions and thoughts about oneself and the world, as well as one's behavior in the world. In other words, how you think about a situation will influence how you behave in that situation. The following people are prominent figures in the development of cognitive psychology. Albert Bandura. According to Bandura, born in 1925, it is not intrapsychic or environmental forces alone that influence behavior. Rather, Human behavior results from the interaction of the environment with the individual's perception and thinking. Self-efficacy, or the belief that one can achieve a certain goal, is the critical component in the achievement of that goal. Bandura also proposed that the consequences do not have to be directly experienced by the individual for learning to occur. Learning can occur vicariously through the process of modeling or learning by imitation. Aaron T. Beck Problem behavior, says Beck, born in 1921, results from the cognitive distortions or faulty thinking. For example, a depressed person will selectively choose information that maintains a gloomy perspective. Depression is experienced when one has negative schema about oneself or one's situation. According to Beck, depression is a behavioral response to an attitude or cognition of hopelessness as opposed to hopelessness being a symptom of depression. Anxiety, he says, is experienced when the person has distorted anticipation of danger. Treatment within Beck's model involves changing the person's view about themselves and their life situation. Martin Seligman Seligman, born in 1942, first proposed his theory of learned helplessness as an explanation for depression. The theory suggests that if an individual experiences adversity and attempts to alleviate the situation are unsuccessful, then depression follows. Seligman later expanded his model to include learned optimism. 
A process of challenging negative cognitions to change from a position of passivity to one of control. It currently conducts research to investigate factors and circumstances that enable humans to flourish. Seligman's theoretical approach is called positive psychology.